Good morning to one and all. First, I must say it's indeed my pleasure to be here this morning to share on a topic that is uh, close to my heart and actually constantly on my head. Because um, I think we, we face uh, residents who come to us every day uh, for various forms of assistance. But bef before I begin, um, as I happen to speak uh, after Dr. Emery Chu, who mentioned the word politics uh, and uh, PAP. <laughs> Uh, I, I thought I'd just like to share a thought on what he said about um, youths having not, you know, having, having not enough time to develop the cultural identity. I think that's natural, uh, having lived for 18 years, 16 years, um, to develop your cultural identity. And you're susceptible to, he said, political manipulation, right? My take on this is, I agree, you're susceptible to manipulation as all of us were when we were youths. But it is not just political manipulation. It is really manipulation of all sorts, whether it's from the media, fashion, uh, fads, uh, values, and so on. So I think it is true. And um, when you make your decisions, when you, you know, decide to pursue certain course of actions and so on, uh, remember this and remember to form your opinions based and views based on informed um, you know, judgment. Uh, get as much information as possible and really uh, from the internet you know with the internet now that is uh, really uh, not a difficult thing to do but anyway coming back to my topic on the rich poor divide now let me say as i uh, said earlier that this is something close to my heart and is really constantly on my head as well as on the heads of all government leaders and i'm sure you know many uh, people here um, the issue of rich poor divide, in fact, is really embedded uh, in the CDCs, that's the Community Development Council's roles, one of the key roles, which is assisting the needy. Uh, for the CDCs, we have three roles, which we call ABC A for assisting the needy, B, bonding the people, and C, connecting the community. And this is really implicit in our charter to help bridge the income divide by motivating as well as rallying the more able in the community, whether they're individuals or companies or you know, organizations, to help the less able. Hence, the rich poor divide is an issue that we at the CDC have to grapple with all the time. How is it relevant to the youth? Well, first of all, of course, um, the organizers decided that this was an a topic that was, is relevant to all of you. But, you know, it has been said that we do not bequeath our communities to our children, but rather we borrow our communities from them. A profound statement. From this perspective, no group has a greater stake in building and nurturing sustainable communities in Singapore than our youth. That's all of you here. While the economic pie might not be equally divided, each Singaporean must feel that he or she is involved in the task of building our nation, connecting our community, and therefore can collectively aspire for a better future. In our continued quest to make Singapore a great global city to live in and the best home for Singaporeans, the younger generation, like yourselves, are the pillars of our future. So you must play your part in conceptualizing possible futures for our country and ultimately bring about positive change in society. And this issue of the rich, you know, poor divide is something that will stay with us. I think it will remain with us. Uh, you can't, you know, uh, avoid it. And you have to continuously think how you're going to grapple with this. As a small open economy, we have benefited tremendously from globalization and free trade. But, and this is a big but, Globalization, I think, as all of you would be aware, has also brought with it issues like the widening income gap. And this will continue to put pressure, especially on the lower skilled, less educated workers. As economies become more interconnected and interdependent, competition will also intensify. PM, I think, in his 
National, Day, National Day rally speech in 2007 reminded Singaporeans that the widening income gap is due to globalization, technology, cutthroat competition, and that the winner of this fierce competition will reap all benefits. So it is really a winner-take-all situation. You know, for example, the continuous race for lower production and labour costs results in outsourcing, brings about lower prices for the consumers, but it also has the adverse effect of reducing wages, or worse still, raising the redundancy, especially of our lower skilled workers. So it is obvious here that those who possess the relevant skills and knowledge will thrive and those who do not will be marginalised. So how bad is the income inequality in Singapore now? Based on data from DOS, Department of Statistics, the median household income for those living in smaller housing type, that is HDB three rooms or smaller flats, grew by 13 to 15% in 2008, while the median income of those living in larger flats grew by a smaller 8 to 12%, 9 to 12%. The disparity in household income from work per household member also dropped in 2008. You can see it from the chart. First time that it actually dropped. Now, economists have also devised a more scientific measure of measuring the rich-poor divide. That's the Gini coefficient index, as shown in the chart. Gini coefficient measures the degree of inequality in the distribution of family income in a country. So if income were distributed with perfect equality, then the index would be zero. It also means that the lower the Gini coefficient, the lower the income inequality. So for 2008, the Gini coefficient index actually decreased from 0.489 in 2007 to 0.481 in 2008. Actually, the first decline, as I've noted, since 1998. Now, if you take into account the government's disbursement of surpluses in 2008, which is all weighted in favour of low income, the figure actually dipped further to 0.462. So there seems to be some improvement in income disparity in recent times. Nonetheless, we know that we still need to continue to keep a watchful eye on it. If the income gap continues to widen or widens again, new fault lines in society may emerge.